I'm pleased to welcome Gregory Lukemeyer, who is principal architect of the Lukemeyer Partnership. He and his associate, Robin Podak, will be working with the library on plans for its renovation, design, and possible expansion. The Lukemeyer firm has renovated and designed over 40 libraries of all sizes in the past 25 years, including the new Silver Spring Library. They have expertise in participatory design, and Greg Lukemeyer has served as an adjunct professor at the University of Maryland Graduate School of Library Science, teaching a course in programming and designing of community libraries. So welcome, Greg. <laughs> Hi, uh, this evening we're actually not going to show you anything. Um, we want to listen and uh, some of you may have participated last year in the um, community needs assessment and, and visioning for a 21st century library that was published in, I guess, uh, January of, of 14. Were any of you involved in that or did any of you participate in that? All right, well, great. So this, to a certain extent, is the first step in the implementation uh, of that. Um, and what we want to do tonight is first introduce who we are, and, and obviously Alan has just done that, and we're pleased to be here. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we have been retained to do. Then I'd like to talk about uh, what we hope to accomplish, talk about a little bit more about the existing library, and um, I have a couple of slides where we want you to kind of react and, and talk a little bit about, about the library. Um, one of the things that we want to accomplish tonight is to listen. Um, the visioning study, for all practical purposes, uh, addressed all aspects of the library, the library services, the um, access, uh, what you'd like to see in different collections, uh, what was good and what was bad about the existing building. So kind of a comprehensive look at library services <coughs> uh, in Tacoma Park. We're going to focus strictly tonight on the building itself. So we're really not going to get into a whole lot about the particular services only in so far as how they affect uh, or how the building affects them and whether the building can accommodate the kind of library services that you're anxious to to have or whether there are is aspects of the building that preclude that and uh, obviously there will, there will be some so what is our scope we've been retained and we started I guess two weeks ago um, to, in effect, uh, begin to implement this visioning. And our first goal, or our first task, in, in effect, to determine how big this library ought to be. And um, what we're going to be doing, and we've already had one fairly lengthy meeting with the staff, and we're starting to collect statistics on the collection and computers and seating and that sort of thing is to try to figure out how many square feet it will take to accommodate the collections, the, the technology that ought to go into the library, the seating, the programming space, any kind of meeting space, and to then compare what uh, is needed with what is existing. Now, obviously, if the needed square feet feet or uh, ex exceed the existing square feet, potentially there might be some, uh, some expansion to the library. We don't know about that. And as we go about this and we determine the number of square feet and what's needed, we're going to be develop a couple of different uh, options, uh, uh, kind of alternative floor plans. As a baseline, we have been asked to see what we can do to reorganize the existing library floor plan. How can it be more efficiently used? How can the um, staff more efficiently monitor what's going on and interact with patrons? Um, how uh, 
people can work together in groups. We all know that um, a lot of learning takes place in group activities these days. We don't just sit and, and research in a library. So uh, we'll be looking at how we can accommodate that within the existing square footage and walls of the library. We'll also look at how it could be potentially expanded. And what we hope to do is to get some enthusiasm for this whole process so that ultimately when um, the study is, is finished, and it is supposed to be finished within this calendar year, so we have a couple of months to do this, and it um, is presented to the political leaders um, of the town, that um, there'll be enough excitement and groundswell that something will happen. And I think that's important to make sure that something does uh, in fact happen. So I took this page out of the uh, visioning report and it talked about what the basic improvements to the library, uh, w what was identified. And it's interesting, um, more books, more digital resources, i.e. more technology, more place, places for people potentially to meet and discuss, uh, just plain more space, um, more audio books, more family programs, which could accommodate just discussions, more places to sit. Now all that sort of tells me, gee, people have experienced the library and it's too small. And that's kind of a gut reaction I think that people have had. This is a plan of the existing library and we'll get into this in a minute. And we're looking at this as not only the L-shaped building that is the library, but a component of the community center and, um, and which the library runs. Now, we all know that libraries are an important element in, in our society. Uh, they're important uh, in terms of uh, recreation in, in people's lives. But we think of libraries as a place that uh, is certainly a civic place. It's an important um, public facility. It's where we're finding that most people get their information these days. It's generally the most high-tech public building there is. Uh, it's a place for lifelong learning. We see everybody from um, uh, children learning to read, people, uh, adults learning to read and literacy, uh, uh, courses being given, particularly computer training courses, a uh, place to simply relax. We hope that libraries are comfortable and, and pleasant enough where on a rainy Sunday afternoon, one of your choices might be, let's just go to the library, it's a nice place and let's read the newspaper and, and enjoy it. Uh, generally, libraries are technology s uh, centers today. The library, uh, librarians and the library staff have access to databases that none of us uh, have access to. And so, despite the fact that we all have our personal computers and we can go on the web and do all kinds of stuff, there is still that need for interacting with the staff who can really help us find any kind of information. And, and I think you'll find that um, recently, in the last several years, libraries have become visual landmarks. I mean, there are towns that are building libraries really to attract people. Obviously, we all know about Seattle's great glass library. Um, we don't envision Tacoma Park having a great glass library. But it needs to be found and it needs to be an important element and I think that uh, as you look at your library today uh, I was mentioning to uh, Ellen tonight that the library is a lot more apparent at night than it is during the day um, in the day it's behind the trees it's fairly dark you really don't see what's going on but at night the lights are on and they glow through the windows and you say aha there's a building there so uh, it's interesting that that um, in this case, uh, the library is, is pretty apparent. We've started with the library staff talking about their needs. Uh, we're in the process of developing uh, space needs and, and I suspect that will be shared. We're going through tonight, uh, beginning of a community design process. We'll be developing concepts, but our goal is to find out what's gonna work for you folks. What's gonna make this a, a successful library? We'll be looking at uh, trends, 21st century library trends, and there, there are quite a few of them. 
we'll be looking and I want to listen to some of the community expectations while we've read the visioning report perhaps we have a whole new group and that's important we're going to be looking at the collections and one of the aspects of this library this particular library is it has a lot of printed material in it uh, and that's unusual to be quite honest with you it perhaps doesn't have as much technology as some contemporary libraries but it has a lot of printed materials and there's a real dichotomy between is should this library be one that houses a lot of printed material where you can always go and find it or does somebody do people really want a more digital kind of a library and so that's an important thing that I want to talk about tonight uh, we're going to talk about seating. We will talk about technology. When we first started designing libraries, uh, frankly, in the mid-80s, when uh, computers were just becoming popular, it's interesting. The, the conventional wisdom was that now that the computers are here, we're not going to need these books. We're going to have all these computers. The books will be on computers. So we're going to be able to save all kinds of space. We won't need all of these stacks. Well, what in actuality happened is we needed double the space because the books aren't going anywhere and you now need space for technology. And so we're seeing that throughout uh, the library world that, that you need to accommodate both. So I think that's, an, that's quite important. We're finding that more and more uh, learning happens uh, in uh, group study and meeting rooms. Uh, we're finding that the kids, and you have like five schools around here that uh, feed into this library, that uh, people need the opportunity to sit around a table or in a small room and discuss. Uh, we're finding that we're putting a flat screen so that you can do interactive learning uh, in the library. You can't do that out in the middle of a library, so uh, small rooms seem to be very, very important. Uh, we designed a library in Frederick where they had a whole series of rooms simply for literacy because of the population really needed literacy training and it needed to be confidential. And so there are a lot of different aspects of libraries that, that perhaps you don't think about that uh, the library world is really accepting these, these new tasks. So it's, it's great to be honest with you. And we're gonna talk about the site and, and uh, aesthetics. Um, you all know the context of where the library is, right here off of Philadelphia Avenue. It's connected to the community center. Uh, what you see here, and some of you may not know that these are all solar panels on the roof of the library. Uh, you don't really see them because they're, they're fairly short. Uh, parking obviously uh, is all around this area and, and the entrance is, is over here. Um, the existing plan, the site plan of the library looks like this. And this is a little bit cartoony, but it's actually exactly the scale. Um, the parking, as you all know, you walk down uh, and, and around the corner into the front door. I am told this is a flood wall. I don't know if all of you know that, but um, to, in essence, try to keep the water as it goes down from getting into the library. Um, the library proper was built in, in at least two phases. The first phase of the library was only this big. Then they added this last section and they added the what's now uh, labeled as a reference area. So this has been built in, in pieces and now it's connected to the um, community center. Um, the exterior character uh, is is fairly straightforward obviously you don't really see the library very much from the parking lot uh, from the street you you do see it although you can't get there from the street uh, I actually walked over here one day and, and walked up thinking I was going to be able to walk by the flagpole into the library but you can't um, you've got this wonderful mosaic on on one wall that uh, it's nice and sparkly and it's interesting, I mean, although the library entrance is right here, uh, I am told that a number of people are come in the side entrance through the community center. And perhaps that's something we want to talk about, is uh, where should the library entrance be? <coughs> if you look at the floor plan, <coughs> this is what the library floor plan looks like with the entrance. We, don't put, we haven't put all the furniture on here, but basically you have stacks. You have reading, 
you have periodicals, you have back issues of periodicals, you have a staff area, you have restrooms, and you have a children's area. That's a fairly traditional layout for a library where you come in and there's adults on one side and children on the other. However, you also then go up a ramp and at least these spaces in blue are operated by the library. It's shared, but the two computer rooms are actually part of the library. That's something else we want to kind of discuss, the relationship between uh, the library and actually going outside and coming into the space and, and can that be done better or perhaps you think there's no problem there, it's just great the way it is. So we'd like to hear about that a little bit. Um, as you know, the interior is jam-packed. There are a number of ADA issues that you may or may not be aware of. I'm not going to go into uh, some of them, but they have to do with the aisle width. That has to do with the fact that what we call dead-end corridors, once you come here and have to turn around and come back the other way, there are dimensions that are required by code that this does not meet. Um, we, as we talked to the staff, we talked a little bit about shelving height. Most library systems are mimicking, I used to say borders, but no more, the kind of a bookstore approach where shelving heights are coming down. You can see over them, it opens up the, the vistas. You can see signage a little bit better. But as soon as you take uh, library shelving, and these are 84 inches tall, down to 66 inches, you've lost one third of the storage space. And so all that automatically adds one third of the floor area to housing the collection. So that's a trade-off that, that uh, we talk about often with library staff is, do you want to try to lower things so that you can see and, and monitor what's going on? Or do you really need the collection capacity and you need to keep those, those uh, stacks at 84 inches? Another thing that, that we want to really talk about, we know that there is technology spread around this library from just on tables, um, around, but the basic technology is, is here in the um, uh, community center. So one of the things I'd like to talk a little bit about is the character of the shelving. And, and as you can also see, all the uh, natural light starts above the shelving height. It's starts at eight feet and goes up to 10 feet. You can't see outside. You don't, you, despite the fact that you have a wonderful park in effect between the library and Philadelphia Avenue, you don't really experience that from inside the library. And obviously those who are outside looking to the building don't really know what's on the other side of those walls. There could be some pretty exciting things happening, particularly in a children's area, which is usually very colorful and, and uh, whimsical and, and there's a lot of fun. So there's that whole issue of, gee, you need the, the perimeter walls to put all these stacks up and that takes away natural light, it takes away views. In current sustainable design principles, you really want as much natural light in as possible and you may or may not want those views. You know, so that's uh, you know another issue that that keep in the back of your mind, and we'll we'll talk about a little bit. So this is another page from the um, I think I did, yeah I'm sorry another page from the visioning report, and this actually identifies library spaces and facilities um, needs, and um, it's interesting. Uh, the first one was increase the accessibility and visibility of the library. Now that harkens back to the whole notion of can you see the library from the street? Is it a beacon? Um, is it something that, that you know you know what's there? Um, library is not that pleasant a space. Well, that may go back to the whole notion of it's crowded, and frankly, furniture is old. Um, we're not going to get into a lot of the environmental conditions inside the library as we look at layout, but we will address it. Um, I'm sure you all walk into the library and you, it's a little musty. It's just the mechanical systems that were placed in the library years ago are not the kind of, of systems that you'd uh, insert today with um, humidity control and, and trying to get some of the 
basic, you know, book smells out. Um, bathrooms are not very nice. Well, not only are they not very nice, but quite frankly, they don't meet code in terms of the number of fixtures. So we will be suggesting different bathroom layouts and, and probably more of them. Um, talking about expanding library space and modernizing the, f the, the feel and the look, that kind of goes back to the first one. Um, library space needs a total redesign. Well, that's, that's what we're doing tonight. That's what we're beginning to do, is to really take a look at the, the library. Expanding areas to sit comfortably. Uh, more seating, more comfortable furnishings, more natural light, um, furnishings on wheels. One of the things that you may or may not know is that when there's a meeting, uh, a lot of the shelving in the children's area is on wheels and it gets pushed out of the way so that there can be a meeting. And the meeting is in the children's room. Um, we're actually currently putting meeting rooms often in libraries that um, can be dual purpose during the day. Perhaps they can be used for uh, meetings or for study or to bring your laptop in and, and uh, go on the web. So um, that kind of reserved space is something that we're seeing more and more of. So, uh, and then the last one, a better interface between the library and the community center uh, to try to um, feed off of each other. And we've talked a little bit about is there a way of opening those two spaces so that the library perhaps seems bigger, and uh, frankly, there's some, I'll call it wasted space in the community center with a, the big octagonal space in the middle. The other page from the report that I thought was interesting is they talked about functional spaces, more space for collections, uh, space for children, study space, a commons for technology, which is a, a fairly standard thing these days, where we often group computers together one, number one, so that they can be maintained as a group where people are having trouble, they can raise their hand and somebody can help them and they're not going all over the library. Years ago we used to distribute them all over the place and it was very hard to keep track of technology quite frankly and so it made more sense to begin to gang these together a little bit and dedicated spaces and, and uh, utilize an outside space. So um, as we look at the site plan and we look at the floor plan, these are the things that we want to begin to address. So the children's area, and maybe we could start there, looks something like this. Um, once again, it has uh, fairly high windows. It's chock-a-block full of, of materials. Uh, I don't know if any of you folks have kids, uh, and anybody wants to make any comments about the children's area and, and things that you think work well or things that you don't think work well. Uh, anybody have any comments about the, the children's area? Often there are kids there are learning English as a second language or learning to read and all and they, having small conference rooms just for kids would be a great advantage. You see that people using the study space and it makes it difficult for smaller kids to concentrate while they're reading because other kids are trying to learn other things and they need to speak. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Yes, you had a comment back there. The, the kids section is great. It's got a terrific collection, and the, the kids librarians are really great also. But, you know, we, my daughter and I, we go and get our stack of books, and we don't stick around in the library to read it. We take it home. Okay. It's not, I don't find it a particularly inviting space, and I don't think my daughter does either. But the collection's great. We, uh, we use it all the time. Okay, that's a good thing to hear. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, I, I find it difficult. When you look at, particularly when you look at the bottom picture left, um, it's hard to see where you want to go to find a book because all the spines are so thin, particularly in you know, the children's section, that it's, it, it's a lot of resources, but you don't, it's not easy to say, oh, I want to go here, I want to go there, or there. Um, I think more, I don't really know about the, right, the, the top right, I haven't been in there that often lately, mm -hmm. whether there's more face-out books, but I think face-out Face, facing books out right. and also having extra copies down below and also dividing them up by subject, like what the kids are interested in, whether it's by, let's have the old dinosaurs here face out or all princesses here or whatever. I don't know what, what people are reading these days. <laughs> but um, uh, to make it more obvious for the kids to go, oh, I want to go to that corner. Right. And, and, and have it change up. Um, um, 
and okay. more books, more obvious, like if there are books that will be supplemental to what's going on in the local schools, to whatever research projects they might be doing, this year it's Egypt, next year it's whatever, to show them so they can easily find the resource books for the projects that they're working on in school. Okay, well good. We're, we are put, writing everything down at this point, so. Yes, sir. Here, you can, you can use this. Children like private spaces to read. They like kind of closed in sometimes, kind of cubby spaces to read in. You know, and there's a place for group activities too, but children kind of like to gather maybe one or two and just sit down and read, cushions on the floor, that sort of thing. And, and you're right about books facing out, but it, it's a mixture. And you go to some libraries and they have the, the, lower the lower shelves like this with the books facing out all around the top and the, those in the bottom. Uh, it's a wonderf wonderful children's uh, library. And the children like to go there. I, I come mostly on Saturdays when they're, they're gathering for activities and singing and whatever. But I see a lot of parents go in with the children and and it works out well. And I see these extremely happy children with huge stacks of books coming out. So I know it's working well anyway. Because after all, the library is not the only place to read. You take the books home to read as well. And I appreciate the library facilitating that. Yes, sir. Yes, I speak with some unique perspective on this issue because I literally grew up in this library. My mother was the lady that hired Ellen used to be the director of library services, worked her way up from being a part-time volunteer bookshelver, which is how most of the ladies in the neighborhood became acquainted with the library and their children became acquainted with the library. So I have a little more than a passing interest in this library and any work that gets done here. And uh, I'm a little put off by some of your comments about people don't know what the library is. Well, that's what signs are for and the library is mm -hmm. not for people who aren't cognizant to be quite blunt about it. I mean, it's a neighborhood resource. It's not for the millions or hundreds of cars that drive by an hour passing our area. We've instituted a charge for library cards for people who don't live in Tacoma Park or don't work mm -hmm. in Tacoma Park or go to school in Tacoma Park now. So mm -hmm. it's really meant for us taxpayers in the community to, and we all know where the library is. We just spent a good deal of money putting up a big sign. And, uh, you know, the library is constrained by space, and I attend the budget meetings at the council. And uh, you know, I, Monday night we had a council meeting, and I heard several council members talk about the tight budget. So right, I'm right. just a little concerned that we're going to get really grandiose ideas here that uh, the uh, beer wallet can't support, if you know what I mean. Understood. But, uh, I like the children's section. I love to see the little kids come in, and uh -huh. particularly for story hour, and uh, that's how I got hooked. Well, Thank I'll tell you, you, you make a good point uh, insofar as when we look at l different kinds of libraries, I would characterize this as a neighborhood library as opposed certainly to a regional library or um, a larger library. And we've talked about the fact that the character of this library is fairly residential. So it's got a very nice scale, it's understated, it's got a lot of books. So uh, I think that the, my comment about not knowing what's in the, the building has more to do with a lack of windows, which may or may not be important to people, quite frankly. It may be that, uh, and I went to a library much like this as a, as a kid, and I have great memories of them, uh, and it didn't bother me one way or another, it's simply I want to I want to put some things on the table to see if I can't get some reaction from from the group here as opposed to I'm not selling anything at this point but I may challenge you to simply get a reaction. Yes, sir. Excuse me. My name is Kenneth Wedge, and I'm teaching ESOL and vocabulary and literacy mm -hmm. to immigrants. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing that the community, this library, does not address. Is you do have a very large diversified community and you would probably have more involvement in the library 
if they knew that services were available, again, ESOL classes, or and classroom space mm -hmm. to actually have them in. And again, we talk about libraries as being great resources for children, but they're also for results. Mm -hmm. And it should contribute, you know, the library's consideration should take everyone into consideration for that. And classrooms would definitely be needed with no, whiteboards. Appreciate small it. Whiteboard. Yes, ma'am. I used to be the community relations manager at Barnes & Noble in Bethesda, and my office was right next to the children's department. And I want to say, this library is so much neater <laughs> than the children's department over there because the kids would pull the, we spent hours reshelving kids' books <laughs> every night. So I just want to compliment you. Whatever's going on here is really good <laughs> that way. But the other thing I really liked about the um, children's department in Bethesda is they have a little stage. Um, it's only one step up, so kids, even little kids, can climb up on it and not, you're not worried about them falling off. But it's a really nice focal point for the for the space, and it can be used by adults too, whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, and the kids can play on it and act out, act out, or just have it as a good focal point for any mm -hmm. presentation there. Okay, good. Good. Yes, sir. This is really more in the, uh, the nature of a question, which is just that, so my family loved the library. My older son in particular, we were there like twice a week. I know Ellen well. I know a lot of the other librarians well. It was a great space for us. But we have many distinct communities within Tacoma Park, mm -hmm. and I think this gentleman referred to one of them. And I do not feel, you know, that I have the knowledge to judge, for example, what the population on Maple Avenue is getting out of the library and all the immigrant populations, different language populations, how they're using the library and whether their kids are finding it useful. But that is a population for which this is a particularly valuable resource. And I would like to make sure that as we go through this planning process that that is really incorporated. And I'm ignorant, so I don't know what's been done, but I just want to raise that here. Okay. I think that's good. Okay. The, the, go ahead. I don't know whether the library is more or less used than it was 10 years ago. I mean, are we seeing a decline in the use of the library, an increase in the use of the library? I don't know. Uh, <coughs> where are you? Yes. I mean, a little bit, a big bit? I don't have hard figures in front of me, but certainly a dramatic rise in program attendance mm -hmm. and some rise in circulation as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. To what extent does this plan, might this include um, taking over that piece of the, between the library and the official community center? Because that would give us the expanded space without whatever. Um, <clears throat> given that the community center's history as you know, was that it was going to be a gym. <laughs> so um, that space, as you indicated, that may not have the kind of usage if we could actually formally take it over or expand some walls or whatever you're talking about. Is that part of the, is that a possibility? Yes, I think that's something that we would explore. I suspect that we will develop anywhere from three to five different options. Some will be, you know, we'll, we'll stretch the envelope and then we'll also stay within the wall. So I think part of our role is to play some what if games and then see where, what's most comfortable and what's realistic, quite frankly. Um, so why don't we just keep moving uh, through, this is not a, we don't have to just keep with any one area, but when you look at the um, uh, basic stacks and reading area, it's mostly pretty open. There is Wi-Fi. Um, I talked a little bit about the stacks and the fact that they're fairly high and they're very tight. Uh, they're very efficient because they're all in one area. So it's like you can read here or you can go into the stacks uh, over there. Um, how do you folks feel about the, um, you know, the way that you read or, or sit? Is this a, a place that is comfortable? Uh, is it bothersome if people are, are talking to each other? Do you feel like you really can't come here and, and uh, interact with others? Um, yes, sir. 
Uh, my name is Wayne Sherwood, and uh, I think the one library is a wonderful resource for the community of it. I look at the, at the stacks, especially when I looked at the floor plan that you had, and it seemed to me that the stacks are a very small part of the floor area of the library. I mean, we talk about having a lot of great books. I mean, I think our, our library is unique in that, uh, especially the selections that we have, uh, our staff is just does a wonderful job and things that we have in Tacoma Park that I wouldn't find elsewhere. So I guess, you know, I don't know what your footprint is for the building or how much room you have to, but I really think the stacks need to be expanded. I'm a strong proponent of books to actually be able to look at books. And um, I don't know if you were, have talked to the people about the community center planning process, but that whole area out between the community center and the Maple Avenue that's now, you just got a hole there with the people parking down on the ground level, was in originally earlier thought of as a potential plaza that would, uh, a plaza level. So it has been built so that you could build on top of that. It was intended to build on top of it. And to my mind, it would be better to have a, a library extended out over that area than to have a concrete plaza that, you know, I, I don't know. Part of it could be, as, as one, they used to think, you know, it would be a place where people could put tables and go out and have lunch and sit out there, and, which would be very nice. But it doesn't necessarily need to use all of that for that purpose. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. I don't come to the library to talk with people, usually, myself. And so you have a, a split here. You don't want the two together, of course. Uh, I usually come in the morning and on a Saturday I sit in one of these wonderfully uncomfortable chairs and, uh, and, and read the, the wonderful periodical section. It's a great section there. I don't usually sit back in the other chairs, but I notice a lot of students back there working and reading and, and writing in that area without computers. They seem to manage to, to do that well. Uh, I have no problem with the stacks, but, uh, but you're quite right. The ADA rules have to open them up in the back. And, but if you kept them in the same space and you did that, of course, you'd lose, ha you'd lose a third of your collection, right? Or something, anyway. So they've got to go somewhere, because I think you ought to keep that collection. It is a wonderful collection. It's probably the best collection in a public library in this area. I mean... Uh, the librarians don't buy five copies of bestsellers and then throw out four after a month. Uh, you keep good books, and uh, it, it's a rarity anyway, and I appreciate it very much. Thanks. Sure. Um, a lot of the discussion, is, is this even on? Yeah, okay, I'll talk loudly. <laughs> so there's been a lot of this. Oh. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> There's been a lot of discussion about space needs, stack needs, etc. And and I like I love the idea of filling in the moat, and you know, and moving across the the way and and using that space. But um, I noticed earlier in one of your slides you talked about keeping the residential feel, and I interpreted that initially as maintaining the the height of the library as it currently exists. And I actually think that the library could go up another floor and still be residential. Uh, there's very few houses in the area that aren't two stories, some even three. And so I think the library could easily go up another floor and with good architectural design, and I'm assuming that you can do that, um, it could be nicely disguised and not be overwhelming on the mm -hmm. corner. And I mm -hmm. think adding a second floor would add an enormous amount of space. It could reduce the height of the, the stacks. It could provide even extra space for for more books and for the meeting rooms. And frankly, I don't see if you don't expand the space how you can accommodate all of the uh, changes that have been uh, suggested here in terms of meeting rooms and small rooms and study rooms and space for young adults, old adults, and, uh, and children. So I'm just saying, go up a floor. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a fairly um, common thing to suggest ultimately what you're going to find is from a structural standpoint the roof is never structured for a second floor and neither are the foundations so yes you can do it it's just money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
I session. agree about the, um, the, the growing of the library um, uh, vertically. I, for one, think it's a civic building, not a residential building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in a location that is civic. Um, Pat, I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, but I think that it could be much more substantial uh, looking and inviting. Um, I've never been a fan of the renovation of the community uh, center and the whatever. Um, and uh, I think that the library could uh, really lead the way to better architecture in Tacoma Park. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll speak now to two points that I feel are important. And one is it would be great at some point in this process if, some decision, if there was data behind what we're considering in terms of, you know, who are the library members uh, and uh, what do they represent um, if they're from other communities that speak different languages or different even age groups. What are the numbers behind that? And what the increase has been, and it, to my and for my own point, you know where they represent in Tacoma Park. I live across New Hampshire, and I'll make my other big point I want to make tonight, which is I don't see. I would really ask this community if they're going to consider um, expenditures on this beautiful jewel that we have, and it can be better. I know to also consider the community center at New Hampshire and how library programming and services could be brought out to the community there as well. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, keep, go ahead, I'm sorry, didn't see you. Hi. Um, I actually never want to sit in the library. <laughs> um, I really want to sit by a window when I'm reading. Uh, I'm not, not with a computer, but, um, so I, I think lighting is really important to me when I want to feel comfortable in a chair uh, with a good book. Um, so I've never wanted to sit there. <laughs> so that's number one. But number two is um, the stacks, again, are not inviting to me. Um, however, I have found some really cool books in there <laughs> that, um, totally by accident, uh, something about a North Korean private investigator. I learned all about life in North Korea through this, these books. There was like a series of them. And, and they were jewels. I never would have known how to figure out how to find them myself. At the same time, I had to find them myself. <laughs> you know, so I think that there, there may be a lot of jewels in there, but we don't even know that they're there. And how do you, how do you give them some PR? Uh, it's one thing to say you want more books, but more books of what? More copies of the same ones, more different ones, some that we just don't have enough of, more current ones, you know, for scientific and technology, you know, that kind of thing. I think. Um, more, it's always nice to say more, but it's, it, uh, I, I wonder how much we have there that is actually, do, you, do we have statistics on the circulation? Like, every, like if, if the book hasn't been taken out in five years, do you get rid of it? Or do you give it another position? Miss, please, that's inappropriate to do that. So, um, do you take it out of circulation? Do you put it in a second section for circulation? Do you bring it out up ahead, out front, and, 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 and reintroduce it to the community? I don't know the answers, but um, this is an opportunity to discuss no, I think that's and good. not shake your head. And I, and I think that uh, Ellen is writing a lot of this down. A lot of what we're, we'll, we will hear tonight will be more um, focused on the operation of the library and not necessarily the building, and so that's fine. So we're taking all this down. I just have two things. One is we don't, the technology is changing so fastly right now, so fast right now, that most, the extent that you need computers for this stuff anymore is even questionable, as so many people have smartphones and uh, iPads, iPods, whatever they call them. <clears throat> but, uh, th and that's moving very fast. So in some, to some extent, are you thinking about computer stations as a, a dinosaur? Uh, maybe not as many, that you need some, because some people don't have access, but, but right. maybe not as many. Uh, the second is there are books and there are books. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and some books you may want av- available in the stacks, but we do have interlibrary loan. We have audible books. We have e-books, and, uh, and not all books need to be in stacks. And so that may be uh, getting some sense of the type of book that you want in the stacks. And then availability of other books may be a way of not having to add sp- stack space. I mean, I, I don't mind books, but, uh, well... Oh, that was outside. Oh, that's right. Oh, I thought somebody didn't like this. I'm just saying they're different books, and not all books need to be in stacks right. uh, based on users and based on what they are, and that may reduce the number of books you actually need to have on site we, and be actually, more useful. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot more use of personal electronic devices, even to the extent that some systems are allowing you to come in and they'll check out an iPad for you for, you know, an hour or two hours or whatever it is. So. That's going to evolve, and we're going to see more and more and more of that. Uh, One of the things, though, that I know that we've talked to the staff a little bit about is we need to accommodate technology in any contemporary library. There's no question about it. Uh, However, this library is known for having a very deep collection of printed materials. And how can we accommodate both? You don't necessarily have to make a choice, either or, uh, but we have to be able to accommodate the technology, and whether that's through personal devices, whether it's through computer rooms as you have outside in the uh, community center, we're not sure what the answer is yet, but um, we know that there is space that's needed to house a collection, no question about it. So the issue is, what kind of other environment should there be in the library to accommodate both technology, study, tutoring, literacy training, whatever else there is. Yeah. The tech, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just waiting. I'll stand behind. Thank you, though. But go ahead, let the lady speak. She can, ladies first. No, 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 please. Um, Your point about the technology, I think, is, um, it is critical and not everybody does have access to all these things. My question has to do with the interface, the connection between the space and the resources. So if we build or if you expand some spaces, is there money for additional computers or is that part of the package? Is there going to be funds for lending smartphones or whatever? In other words, what's the connection between the plans about the way it looks and some of the things we're planning to put inside those spaces. Right now there is no plan. The plan is to investigate how to make this a better building, right. a better library. Yeah. And uh, I think part of the process here is to understand the implications of this uh-huh. and then to find out what the financial implications, the economic implications are. So we don't have an answer at this point, okay. but I think those are one of the things that we will be Yeah, so that we don't build, theoretically, space for more, say, computers and laptops, and then we have em- it's not used because we can't buy the pieces. Right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And thank you. Oh, that's fine. No problem. Ladies first. Uh, I forgot to mention when I was talking about having literally grown up in the children's room there that when I was growing up in that library, I was not an unwilling, unpaid lab rat, which we are now doing to our children. And I'm very concerned about wireless versus wired internet. Mm -hmm. And as Washington, D.C. area is known as the number one location for both cyber terrorism and cyber crime in America. Most people don't know that. I'm concerned with unlimited access, wireless internet for people that we know nothing about. They come in, they're standing at the door when the library opens, they stay till the library closes. They are more than likely don't live here, aren't paying taxes to support the library. They don't have a library card, so they don't pay anything for the use. And we don't know what they're up to. We don't know who they are. And I'm very concerned with the children's section specifically being bathed in wireless internet all day long. And uh, I, would, I don't know if you know who Michael Faraday was, but I would like to see the Wi-Fi in the library be restricted and tuned so that it's not just 
ricocheting off all four walls and most importantly in the children's section okay. because uh like i said i don't want to be an unpaid lab rat and we don't know what non-ionizing radiation is going to do down the road and uh, i'm very concerned about that and i'm also concerned about people feeling that it's some sort of right to come to the library and have the right to use internet continuously okay. and uh I'm also concerned about the idea that the library should become a place for community space because we have a community center. We've got rooms just like this one. We've got the giant atrium. Uh, we have all these various places that people can gather if they want to have a meeting or they want to have an informal talk or whatever. And I don't want the quiet and respectful nature of the reading room i've been in libraries from california to florida to iowa to new york new jersey pennsylvania all over this country and like i said i enjoy being in a library and i often seek out a library when i go to a town just to see what it looks like and uh, i like the idea of a quiet place to read okay. thank you thank, thank you. you just to follow up to the comment about the idea of building a second floor you saw a lot of nods in the audience and um, in addition to statistics about use of the building and what monies it might take for inside uh, there was as part of the community um, development of the of the community center that we're standing in now there was extensive discussion about putting a second floor on the library that's so don't reinvent the wheel but take another look at it okay because if you say it's just money but if there is a way to quantify what the just money means um, it may help the community um, look at whether or not it's feasible to put a second floor in. It's a very popular idea, mm -hmm. and the more we can vet that particular idea, the further I think we can get the discussion going. Okay, no, that's that's a, a good idea, and we and we will look at that, and we will pull a, a cost estimate of that. And Ellen, I mean, I think you probably have access to whatever was discussed last time around, and obviously it's out of date, but. Right. But for this is, it's the kind of basic information that could very much benefit the community's understanding of where we can go. Okay, thank you. Um, my name's Alice Sims. Um, I love the library. I've used it. I used the kids' room. I used the books. I used the books on tape. But I want to make a plea for the computers. Not everybody has computers. Not everybody has iPhones. Not everybody has iPads. Uh, we need the computers. I think the kids work on them after school. And um, sometimes they have nowhere to go and they need the computer or they're used to it or they you know, want to get used to it. I would like to see... Uh, on the computers, and I don't know how feasible this is or how expensive, but the city has many video editing programs like Final Cut and Premiere and Motion and Photoshop, and they're in a locked room and we never get to use them. Hmm. And it would be, I mean, we get to use them occasionally, but not very much. It would be wonderful if the library had some of these programs on some of its computers and that the the people could use it could come in and and use those things particularly i mean they're so expensive now that i mean not to mention that you can't have a computer but you probably can't afford the monthly fees of of these programs which are you know would be great for the public to be able to have access to i, I believe so thanks thank you there is a computer room available for usage by everybody. There, you there have to is, sign up for it. But it doesn't have these programs. It would if you started asking for it. We, we've been asking, we've been for, asking it. for it. For over a year. It costs, it's very costly to get these programs in. That's and that's what it is. There are The there library are. would have the same problem getting the, the costly programs like uh, any of the design groups. The, city, the last thing I'm going to say, the city already seems to have some access to these programs. If we could either cooperate with them or have some of them put on 
Jim and I have taken a course. It, it, it's expensive. I don't own these things myself, but it would be nice to have them on the library computers and be able to use them. It sounds like there's a lot of community needs I'm hearing, and I, and I, I just want to say I don't know to what extent the community center can also serve to help with, say, meeting rooms or tutoring. I mean, I'm just hearing that this is more than a library piece. But I'm here, I raised my kids here and came to Storytime, and I, we have a business here. I grew up in Tacoma Park. Um, and I'm actually here because my daughter has a health issue, and she cannot be in radiation for a long time. And the issue of wireless radiation, if you haven't looked into it, please look into it because it is non-ionizing radiation and there's a lot of credible research showing that it affects people's immune system, reproductive system, and not just increased cancer. And I would like a library where I can come with my kids and not have to look at where the routers are and not have to know that this is time that's adding up with their time. And I think that, you know, the public's I'm not going to go into what's happening in the whole public school system and public library system, but there's an opportunity for Tacoma Park to have fully wired connections. And I think that we should take that opportunity because, you know, everyone said to me when I say, I will pay to rewire this school, they say, well, it's going to be too complicated and inconvenient. Well, you can put it in when you do, the, when you do this, and you can, there has to be computers for people who don't have them. So you can have access and you can have access you know on the walls for people who want to plug in and you could even have information for people about why they might want to care about this and i have a lot of information if anyone wants any <laughs> i'll add but that's why i'm okay. here good thank you let's um talk a little bit about technology because there are places in the library where you can find computers sort of scattered around and then as a number of you have said there are formal rooms that have computers in them and that have training and, and all kinds of things. I don't know whether they have publishing um, software or not, to be quite honest with you. And then, of course, the old corridor leading to the restrooms had a few other uh, uh, computers as well. So one of the things that um, when I first came to this library, I had no idea that these rooms outside the library were part of the library. And I've heard a couple of people say, can we integrate that somehow so it doesn't seem like you're either in or out. But I think it's important that you do have spaces that have the technology. Um, and I'm not sure whether most people use the, the more public or formal rooms or, or whether people you know, feel comfortable using the, the smaller spread out computers. But there's no question that, that uh, technology has to be there. And as we get to the um, interface with the um, community center, I mean, if you look from the library into the community center, that's what you see with the circ desk next to me. Uh, as you look from the octagonal area here back to the library, you see this kind of thing. And there's a ramp, and the floor levels are about a foot apart. So there has to be some sort of, of ramp. Um, and I don't know whether um, folks have any problem with the fact that you know you go to the community center for some library services whether you think you're missing anything or whether it's a good thing um, to be separate um, yes sir I have been attending uh, some programming of, in that room that's at the very far upper left mm -hmm. and, yeah. and uh, there's been a sort of an online massive online course taught there sometimes two courses on Sundays and we gather in there and two of the library staff come and uh, I don't know Patty's library staff or not she is she is okay well two they come down there and uh, they get us all to discussing whatever that week's course was and, uh, and Rebecca brings us coffee and muffins and that's a, a new library service and, uh, and they download all kinds of things they show them on the screen on the wall the only problem is it's it's kind of cramped because it's also a computer room and there, I don't see any problem at all as being connected to the library it just feels so natural that these library staff come and, and they do that and it's just been a wonderful service to the community yeah. good. Good. 
Okay. Let's talk a little bit about, because people have talked about, gee, can we go up, can we go out? It seems like there's more need than there is space. Um, once again, and, and somebody pointed out, rightly so, that's the area of all the stacks. Now, obviously, they're chock-a-block, and there's some things that need to be spread out because of actually ADA regulations. Um, but you're right. You could increase the number of pr the amount of printed materials without increasing the the area uh, dramatically. But um, if in fact, and and we're just learning about this flood wall, so I, I'm not exactly sure what it does. But um, obviously, if this library was to be expanded in this space, there were a couple of comments early on from the visioning study about trying to use this space uh, for something, whether it's for library use, whether it's community use. Any comments about that? When the, I, I can't remember, it's been a long time since we did the community center, but the, the county said, you know, this is a low point of the bottom of the hill that comes down Philadelphia from both directions and down Maple, and so this area, uh, if, for example, these underlying, underlying uh, flood drains, uh, stormwater drains, so hold all the water, the, the water level sort of rises up, and it would rise up from Philadelphia, and they put in those storm walls to kind of route the, any flood water that wouldn't go right in, over into the library or into the basement of the community center. So uh, no one knows if it's in a bad storm, if it was, it hasn't ever been tested, but that was the requirement, and it cost the city an enormous amount of money because they also had to dig up this whole area and put a underground stormwater holding tank. At under great the, expense. I think the total yes. came to 800,000. That was a real cock A million dollars under there. But they it's, wouldn't listen to the neighborhood. Well, but it's there. So. I played in the little creek and spring. It used to be right there where the parking level is for the police department and I warned them don't dig down there go up the hill and nobody listened and they found that spring and then they had to put in enormous remediation pipes down to Sligo Creek to dump the water and my home which was not prior in a official federal floodplain is now in an official federal floodplain because an engineer I believe from the county came around and after surveying the 500 year rains and the whole to do, he said, oh no, you gotta put the Fort Apache wall around the right. library and all this area, which my house is included in, is now an official federal flood lane. Okay. Any other comments about the, yes ma'am? Um, just to, I actually am an intern at Citizens Climate Lobby and all I've been reading about is how fast the waters are rising on the East Coast compared to other parts, compared to the West Coast. So floodplain is, with climate change, is more of an issue. Can't look at the past, gotta look at the future, what would happen. But um, the flood wall where people sit, there's a lot of nannies that come, you know, for the, for the um, morning program and they sit with the kids there on the wall. I think it would be nice that if that continues to be a place where people congregate, that it's a little safer and more pleasant for the kids, because the kids run around, the nannies talk on their phones and to each other, and the kids run around. So um, let's, um, enough said about that. <laughs> but the, uh, but it'd be nice to have it a little bit more friendly mm -hmm. uh, for the kids to run around if they're gonna fall down maybe on something that's not concrete. Um, uh, and this may be an uncomfortable thing for some people, but I think that I did walk through there once when a lot of people were waiting to go in and asked how many people were residents of Tacoma Park, and none of them were. And um, I just want to know if, if, if we're going to do programs, are we going to make sure they're paid for, whether they're paid for by our taxes and we're, we're open to having anybody from any community come, or is it important to at least say, at least you got to, buy a um, library card in order to get in so that there's some kind of uh, sustenance for the programs. Okay. 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 I would just say, data aside, in my humble opinion, I would just say keep it green as much as possible. I think that 
is unusual in this space. There's nothing, I mean, it's so wonderful in the afternoons when you see kids playing football out on that lawn and then other people going into the library and there's this exchange of being able to do all those different types of things. Okay, all right, good, good. Yes. And I do wish there was a better connection between the street and the library. Right. When they put the, I didn't realize it was a flood wall, but when they put that in, I was appalled that they broke the connection from the street right. and it became a suburban library with only access from the parking lot. And I believe that that flood wall, it, we are not allowed to put steps over it. I'm sorry, I didn't We are that. not allowed to put steps over it. Okay. Right. So it's there as a floodplain. So it's one of the, it may be the most immovable thing about this whole entire okay. site. Uh, and I do support the um, the keeping of the green space and enhancing it more I think it would be used more there have there was discussion I believe about creating um, outdoor space for people to read um, outdoors mm -hmm. and that space is there and we can't dig into it so maybe we should enhance it okay good is that good. me is that me whoa Oops. I don't think I did that and there are plenty of people that have ideas for landscaping. So. One of the questions I had is uh, for you, all of you is, are there any um, security concerns either in the parking lot or getting to the library or uh, in that area? Is that something that ought to be addressed? I, I'd like to, before we move on to that, it seems as if we can't go up, we can't go out into that floodplain area. Do you, do you have some ideas about how we could expand the library? Because all these discussions with no additional space seem like there's no place. I, I don't know where we're going to put, put any of this. Uh, yes, there's some, uh, we do have some ideas. And, and quite frankly, we're not, uh, one of the things we're not talking about tonight are, is the staff space which is generally about 20, 25% of a library's area because the staff needs to be able to work in a reasonable place and offer the program. So it could simply be that the way we reorganize uh, the library, one of the things that's very apparent, and we've talked about it with the staff, is this periodical room, which you know most periodicals right now are online, back issues. You don't have to keep more than a year's worth of Time magazine. Um, throw them all away and you know you can find it online that may open up that whole space we may reorganize other parts of the library we will investigate perhaps combining the library with the, com the uh, community center uh, space so there we have some, a number of ideas um, is not to say even though that's a flood wall and I really don't know what's out here right now but the trees are big enough and old enough, so I suspect there's nothing out there except land. Um, I don't think there's anything under the, the, the soil here, uh, unless it was there 50 years ago. Well, it's a little further up past the trees. The right, water it's probably over here. Totally new stormwater holding there. Yeah, right. And that's a fairly typical thing in an urban area to, to do something like that. But it could be that even some of this area could be expanded. Somebody talked about a reading terrace outside. We don't really have any preconceptions. We really are trying to listen to you folks. We're listening to the library staff, and it's all going in the brain, and, and we'll kind of come back with some ideas based on what we hear from you folks. I was wondering why the Silver Spring Library, the new one, will have any effect on how we think about this library. Mm -hmm. I suspect that there will be folks who will go there just because it is um, it's going to have a lot it's going to have a lot of technology. Uh, it's hard to say. To be quite honest with you, there the the county's library system is beginning to think of libraries as library s 
slash community centers. A lot of um, meeting spaces, a lot of uh, spaces to, to get together with other people. Um, there's a lot of uh, spaces for learning, whether it's literacy, whether, you know, early childhood literacy. Um, it's a different kind of a library. I mean, it is a truly big urban library. Only a mile away. Yes, and, and there will be people who choose to go there for certain things and people who choose to come here simply because of the scale of it. I mean, that is a big building and it's going to seem much more commercial or, or um, institutional than I think this library certainly does today. And so people may feel much more comfortable in a library of this scale than they do in a library, a large urban library. Plus that library will now require paying for parking. Um, I don't, yes, if you park in the parking garage, yeah. They think a lot of people are gonna walk. That's their hope, anyway. Good exercise. No, they're gonna take the purple line, not. <laughs> but that's another aside. Just out of curiosity, um, go ahead. I'm opposed to getting rid of the periodicals. I like the idea of something that's hard copy. Mm -hmm. You know, this handful of dust stuff of everything's <laughs> going to be is not for me. I don't know about you, but I like the idea that once something's printed, there's no going back and doing revisions. And uh, yeah, I that's... really appreciate the fact that the library has National Geographic all the way back to our bicentennial. And I went back and read the bicentennial issue just the other day because there were five geniuses that the National Geographic went to and said, what do you see for the nation in the next century? Uh -huh. And it was a very interesting read. And uh, There's also ways of storing some of that with compact shelving that the staff can go back and get. And you can store three times as much in the same square area and on that same vein as i was saying to the assistant city manager who you maybe met susie ludlow mm -hmm. that i would like to see the library become a place where there are hard copies of much of what goes on in the city we pay for studies and these kinds of things and then i for one don't want to lose my eyesight staring at uh screens there's a lot of evidence of screens not being so good for you and uh, I like looking at a hard copy. I like holding it. I like being able to flip through it and not having to figure out which page I'm on and going back through directories <coughs> and links and all that. And maybe I'm just linear in that way because of my age, but I think that it's uh, a much better way of doing okay. things. And right. I think that if the city would provide the library with these kinds of resources on a more up, up a regular basis, people might become more active in the city government and unaware of what's going on. Okay. Like Thank tonight, you. there was no notice in our city newsletter of this meeting. There was no notice on the city web page except below the fold. No, it was in this issue, not in last week's, not, not last month's, because I went and looked tonight. You know, so I didn't get my mailbox copy yet. Here it is the 8th, and most people... This is not a very good turnout for this meeting, to be quite frank. And I would suggest to you that if there would have been a wider uh, effort made to elicit the neighborhood, that more people would have come. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. Peter Kohler. I was late getting here, so maybe this was addressed earlier. But um, to the extent that it could be expanded into the uh, green area over there, and again, I understand that maybe it couldn't be. Um, I view the library and the community center sort of being connected, and that mm -hmm. connection should be maintained. And if this has been mentioned already, again, I, I apologize, but there was the talk, I think someone mentioned, of the plaza concept earlier for the, right. for the community center. So mm -hmm. maybe this is the time to get into that, too. That could create the outside to... space that people are talking about, wanting so that there's more room for people, whether they're in the community center, to be honest, or the uh, library because you'd have an open area. It might not be as green as a lawn, but it could have a lot of plantings and so on. And then you could expand the stack area to you know, potentially double its size uh, and, and still get more open space. Because right now, it's just wasted space with the 
a sort of depressed um, right, right. parking area. <clears throat> so, and that that area is all through this, all through this yeah. area. It starts right there. Yeah. So it's it's an option. Depressed We've actually and talked depressing, about uh, parking. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the most attractive thing. <laughs> it looked good in the original drawings because it was all that area was covered, and it had a lid on it, and on top of it was tables and umbrellas like a street scene in Paris or something like that. Yeah. Uh, it just never quite happened. Yeah. Yeah. All, all of that is paving. So. All right, well that basically um, concludes my remarks. We, um, for those of you who had one of these little questionnaires, if you would either leave them on your chair or bring them up, that would be great. Um, We've talked about trying to have a page on the website, the, either the library website or the town website, so that people can make comments. I'll be making this, these slides available for, the, for that purpose. Um, but I, I appreciate the, the, the input. We, um, you know, we never know what we're going to hear in a, in a public meeting. I think that it's obvious that, that this is a very popular library and there are a lot of good qualities to it. Um, I think that even if you know, there was better or newer furnishings and lighting and, and finishes, it would seem quite different, even if it's as crowded as it is today. But um, I think that um, the, you have a unique community, and, and I think that we need to figure out a way of making this library work for this community. It's not going to be a Silver Spring community. So it's very helpful for us to, to hear what you're saying about this.